Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Game. It's the new man of the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir, Lucas's Path. I know some of y'all been wanting me to get right back to uh, Oscar. Oscar is coming right after Lu I'm done with Lucas. I'm all focused on one path at a time. But anyway, y'all, please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of entertaining. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up. And let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Seeing that picture of that young raccoon hunched over and crying, I can't help but imagine that it's Lucas. The way he always looks on the brink of tears whenever things are exceptionally bad. I can feel my breath racing and my steps soon follow. I can feel the adrenaline pumping through my veins. My desperation is rising and I can feel the bile at the back of my throat. Don't freak out. Please don't freak out. I don't know if I'm talking about Lucas or myself, but I have a feeling that's not going to matter. I'm so lost in my thoughts that I'm not paying attention to where I'm walking. And the moment my foot touches something that isn't the cold floor, my fur prickles into needles and I let out a yell, yelp, borderline scream. I'm not sure if it's the raw fear empowering me, but I swear I jumped at least four feet in the air. On the floor, another little pamphlet lies, but my attention is focused around it because the surrounding area looks much dirtier, and for a split second, it looks like it's spreading. Staring at it longer, it's very clearly not moving, but there's a sinking feeling in my stomach that if I look away from it, then it will grow and consume the rest of the floor like a festering infection. Despite the ominous circumstances, my curiosity gets the better of me, and I pick up the folded paper. Reading what's written inside, it causes the rest of the hospital to fall away, and that hideous feeling of dread swells with greater force within me. This is all your fault, Wally. Why do you always ruin everything? My hand begins to shake and the piece of paper falls to the, falls slowly to the ground. The world is spinning around me and it's like time is slowing down and speeding up at the same time. Before I know it, I'm on my hands and knees, my head's hanging towards the floor. The only sound I can hear is the uneven heaves of my breathing and the skin crawling cracking of claws digging into the line into the lino below. I can't do this. Not again. I can smell the beach in the distance and I'm not even sure if it's real or just my head fucking with me again. Then, just as suddenly, there's a hand on my back. It's warm and soft, rubbing in long strokes. It's like a lighthouse in the middle of a stormy night. Pushing everything out of my head as much as possible, I focus onto that hand. That sweet beacon. With only the sound of my rapid breathing and the light scratching of claws through fur, I'm able to push everything out of my hand and just wait and just exist for a moment. These few seconds feel like an eternity, but eventually my breathing slows. It's still at a faster pace than usual, but I'm able to finally move my body, if slowly. Looking up towards my savior, it's both unsurprising and somehow the biggest relief I've ever experienced. Lily! Hey, you doing okay? You look like you were having some trouble. She gives me a soft smile that reaches her eyes, which are filled with concern and extremely exhausted. I can't imagine this has been any easier on her, but, but she, uh, on her either, but she managed to push that aside for me. I'm fine. I swear, just needed a moment to, um... You don't have to make up an excuse. It's okay to need help. You don't gotta be ashamed of it. I know, it's just embarrassing. You have nothing to be embarrassed of, especially around me. I can feel my ears burning, but there's a swell of happiness within my chest. I can't believe I have a friend who cares about me as much as she does. I wonder what Marcus would think of me now. Throughout all this, she never stops brushing her fingers through my head fur. I can tell she wants to ask what's wrong, but surprisingly, she's showing a lot of restraint. I guess this is a bit more of a serious situation than Lucas having vague problems in the library. I think I'm good. You sure? We don't have to go yet, and in fact, I'd rather see as little of this place as possible. Not a fan of hospitals? Her face crunches up in disgust. It's very clear it's much more than just a simple dislike, but when she catches me looking at her, curi at her curiosity, she swipes it off her face and brings back that reassuring smile. It's certainly not my favorite of places, you can say that. Now come on, let's find the others and get out of here. Her hand leaves my head and I feel an immediate yearning for it to return. That comforting touch. It's not something I've had in a long time. Maybe I can ask her to try it for me later. Taking her hand, I'm surprised by how easily she's able to pull me up. She's the same size as I am, but she pulls me up like it's nothing. Whoa! My dad's a self-defense trainer. Ex-military CQC stuff. I can kick any guy's ass, don't you worry. She, she, she preens at that and puffs out her chest in a way that reminds me a lot of Oscar. She's got a massive grin on her face like him, too, though her tired sunken eyes are a grim reminder of how serious their situation is. She quickly drops the axe, realizing this probably isn't the time for that before she waves me towards her. Expecting to continue down the hall like I had been, Lily walks past me and indicates for me to follow her. I came from that way. There's nothing but a bunch of locked doors, even the stairwell. Do you think there's maybe a key in one of these rooms? Have you tried opening any of them? Not really. I was just hoping to find some stairs and get out. Walking towards one of the doors, she tilts her head and waits. The look of amusement in her eyes and the way her ears leans towards me makes me feel a bit silly, but I take a step forward regardless and pull on one of the, pull on one of the doors. It doesn't budge at all. There's never, the sound, there's never the sound of the door struggling against the lock. It's like it can never open to begin with. One second, y'all. Let me save it right here and have a little bit of coffee. 
Ooh. Oh, yeah. Like that, like me that espresso cold brew. What the? Lily doesn't look surprised at all, and there's a small resurgence of panic in my chest. I must have shown on my face because she places her hand on my shoulder in reassurance. Hey, it's okay. None of the doors are locked. I found one that leads to this hallway. We're fine. We just have to find a way out. But this door, it didn't even rattle or anything. Yeah, I don't think these doors even lead anywhere. I tried kicking one down, but it was like it was hit I was hitting a wall. I didn't even hear any echoing on the other side. Where are we? No hospital is like this. I don't think that matters right now. Let's just keep moving. Yeah, okay. Does your phone work? Mine's out of battery. No, it doesn't. I, I fully charged it this morning, but it's not turning on. Don't worry. I'm sure it's just flat after we got knocked out for so long. I'm not sure if that's better or worse. That means we've been here for a while. Returning back to the room I woke up in, Lily peeks into peeks into before taking a few steps in. She looks around for something before looking confused. Why is this one unlocked? Oh, um, I woke up here. You woke up in a room? I only woke up in the hallway on the gross floor. There's a temptation to mention how I'd been on the floor as well, but I don't think now is really the time for semantics. What's this? Lily points towards a piece of paper on the ground before I had been, where I had been lying. Did I miss it when I searched the room before? I swear there wasn't anything there, but maybe I missed it. As she picks it up, I feel a familiar sense of dread. What if it's another message directed at, towards him? What if it's... She turns it over, and it's just a small photo of some blue flowers sitting in a thin glass vase. Below the photo, written on a blank space, is the words, Where have you been? It's very beautiful, and nothing like the taunting message I received. But Liz has gone silent with a somber expression on her face. It's subtle, and she's able to keep her eyes from drooping, but that smile she wears turns a darker shade of bittersweet. Are you okay? Looking towards me, she gives me a slow nod before putting the photo on the nearby desk. It stands out amongst the piles of pamphlets. Yeah, I'm good. It's nothing. Just reminded of something I haven't done in a while. I'm about to ask her for more details when she motions towards the door, moving and waiting beside it for me to follow. Let's go find the others. I bet Lucas is freaking out. I should ask her what's wrong, but I don't think now's the time. We should be focused on finding the others. So I nod and follow her out and down the hallway, checking doors as we pass them for any give. Ugh, no luck so far. After what feels like ten minutes of walking down numerous corridors, we reach a stairwell that makes me excited to finally have anything other than just endless white hallways with the same fake doors. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere! Lily had, Lily had quickly gotten back to her cheerful self. I can't understand how she's so calm and composed at the moment, let alone smiling. I feel like I'm two steps away from a panic attack. Things are going to be fine, don't worry. She must have sensed my thoughts because she's now resting her hand on my shoulder and giving me that sweet, concerned smile. Yeah, okay. Everything will be okay, no need to worry. I'm trying my best to give her a very shaky smile. It's not very convincing, but she plays along regardless, pulling away and gesturing to the stairs. There we go! Hopefully these lead somewhere. At the bottom of the stairs, we're confronted by three different hallways. By the signs above them, they each lead to a different department. The left hallway leads to the Physical Rehabilitation Therapy Department. I've never even broken a bone, let alone had to have a phys had, led, had to have physical therapy. That sounds terrifying. The hallway directly opposite them leads towards the emergency room. That place surely has an exit, right? And patients need access to it from the outside. The final hallway on the right looks to head towards the Speech and Language Services Department. That's new to me. I've never heard of this area before. It's an area for helping those with communication problems, like if you need to improve your speech skills or have some kind of restriction. Oscar mentioned having a friend with mutism. I I'm sure he's gone through speech and language therapy. Lily must have caught my confusion because she clarifies it quickly. I'm not sure I completely understand, but I get the gist of it. I don't really know anything about hospitals. I've never had to go in one before. It's just something I've learned. I've visited every winter hospital a fair share. Any reason what- The layout of this place doesn't make a lot of sense, but then again, I don't think a lot of this does. Best just to roll with it. She cuts me off and replies with a jokey tone, but it's clear that it's a topic she doesn't want me to pry into. I don't think Lily would ever get angry at me for asking, but I don't want to push her boundaries regardless. Looking back towards the hallway, I can't help but wonder what else comes comes under needing that kind of treatment. My mind instantly wonders about Lucas and how he behaves in class. Would this have helped him? Maybe he did go. Maybe he did go to it, and that's and that's why he's in, and that's why he's at college. He seems to absolutely hate it in school, and he's definitely awkward around people. But I don't know if that's the kind of thing we you need to you need these services for. Returning my focus to the situation, I turn towards Lily, and I can't stop myself from wringing my hands. My entire fur coat must be standing on end with how tense I'm feeling. Which way do we go? The ER will definitely have a way out. It's an entrance for people needing an emergency, after all, but we might want to look around to see if we can find the others. Peeking my head into the speech and language therapy services, I can't help but feel more cautious about this now after Lily confirmed what it was. 
I'm not sure why this place reminds me of Lucas. I think it's my own stereotyping at play, but I can't stop myself from taking a few steps into the hallway, because maybe he's down here and needs my help. It's not very hard to imagine him terrified at this kind of situation. He barely does well in normal stressful situations, especially not one, not one as serious as this one. As soon as I step into the corridor, there's a slamming behind me, followed by a panicked yell from Lily, and I can't stop myself from almost tripping over as I try to spin around. Behind me, where the doorway to the hallway used to be, is a set of large metal bars blocking the exit. Looks like ones you'd see in a jail cell. Wallace, are you alright? What happened? I don't know. The bars just fell from the top of the from the top of the door. She's speaking quickly, but I can tell she's trying to keep her cool. In fact, it looks like she's managing to calm herself down rather well. I wish I could have that same kind of that same kind of self-control, because right now I can feel my heart racing within my chest and my breathing accelerating to a fever pitch. Reaching up to the bars are cool against the pads of my fingertips. A quick tap with my claw confirms the real and definitely metal. Gripping the bars, I give a half-hearted tug to see if there's any give at all, but quickly stop once I know it's not going anywhere. My upper body strength is weak as it is. I can't move or bend metal bars. Lily, on the other hand, gives me a much more enthusiastic attempt and pulls with her all her might. I can see the muscles on her arms tensing and veins pushing the fur on her neck. Eventually, she too gives up with an annoyed grunt, but if there's one silver lining, at least now I know she can easily beat me in a fight. I don't think this thing's budging. Sorry. What else? What, what did we do? Should we wait for help or what? I think it's best we split up here. You go deeper. You go deeper inside. Maybe you'll find someone or another way out, and I'll go down another hallway. Maybe we can meet up along the way. This music is really good. I hope it's not copyrighted. The thought of leaving Lily is terrifying. It takes an enormous amount of strength to not burst out in tears right now. But what if you get locked in too? It doesn't look like there's any keyholes, so I don't think we're going to get this open. I doubt we're coming back. I doubt we're coming back through here. I want to argue more, but there's nothing else I can add because she's right. Unless we find some mechanism that opens this, there's no way I can make it back, but... But... But I'm scared. I don't even have to say anything because Lily must see the fear written all over my face. She approaches the locked door and cups my face before whispering in a calming low tone. Hey! Hey, you're okay! You can do this, Wallace. I know you can. All I'm able to do is give her a silent nod. I'm not sure I believe her, but I'll try my best to live up to her expectations. Good! It's just a temporary split up. Catch up, catch up with you later. She gives me a wave before disappearing down the emergency room hallway, not giving me any chance to speak. It doesn't feel rude, but more that her trust in me is absolute. It's reassuring in a strange, roundabout way. Taking a couple of cautious steps away from the bar as I look down the hallway in front of me. Unlike the previous areas I've been in, this feels warmer. It might just be the, co the color of the lights, but which are a sunset orange color. Or even the new beige-colored flooring that's affecting the mood and tricking me into thinking it's warm against my pads. Despite the cozy temperature, it doesn't feel more comforting. In fact, this place feels suffocating. I know it's probably just my imagination, but the walls feel closer here. While the previous areas were pretty barren, this hallway has objects littered throughout, taking up lots of space. These range from benches periodically spaced across the wall to many different kinds of potted plants. There seems to be a, district, a distinct effort to make this place look less threatening and put whoever's down here at ease. It's not having any effect on me, though. Maybe if I came here under normal circumstances, I could appreciate it better. As it stands, it's like this whole place is trying to leave as a, to leave a, as little space for me as possible. Nothing to, to the degree that I can't just walk through the through, but it's putting me on edge. I can't focus on that at the moment. I have to be brave. Lily's counting on me to meet up with her, and Lucas might need help too. Straightening my back, I push down on the growing anxiety welling up in my chest and take my first steps down the corridor. It's only a couple feet in a couple feet in before something catches my eye. On the wall is a notice board, but instead of being covered in schedules or anything formal. It's instead completely swarmed by children's drawings. I wonder if the kids who drew these were patients here. It's like the hospital kept little mementos of all of them. There must be at least 50 of them. Despite all the fear I've been feeling, I can feel the corners of my mouth curl up. It's such a wholesome sight that I can't help myself. The one that catches my eyes the most is a drawing containing a poorly drawn fox holding hands with some kind of canine. They both have smiles on their faces that are bigger than their entire head. Above the two of them is the words, New Friend. I'm not even sure if it's actually a fox, but looking at it reminds me of Lucas, and why I had been so curious about this department in the first place. Lucas is pretty freaked out, freaked out of his mind, and I'm here staring at children's doodles. Giving myself a firm shake of the head, I turn away from the board and walk at a faster pace. No more detours, just meeting back up with Lily as soon as possible. Turning around an upcoming corner, the heat has become increasingly harder to ignore. The temperature has been continuing to rise to a more comfortable level the further into, the, into this department I go. It had been freezing in the area uh, in the area I woke up in, but here, it's much warmer like there's a heater turned on to a low setting. Is there one running in this area? The lights are working here after all, so they have electricity. 
Maybe they had one here for, for patient's comfort and they didn't turn it off. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but neither does this place having any kind of electricity at all. It's best not to give too, get not to get too caught up on those on those till all of us are out here. Help! My fur frizzes fur frizzes as my ears perk up at the voice. It's weak and barely audible, but thankfully the corridor is silent. Running down the hallway further, I can't find anything out of the ordinary outside of the pieces of furniture scattered throughout the hall. H Hello? Where are you? Are you okay? My voice sounds panicked and I can feel my tail lashing against the ground. My heartbeat is thumping in my ears and I have to focus to block it out. W Wallace? Wallace, is that you? Please, I, I can't, I, I can't. The voice cuts itself off as it dissolves into sobs and gasping breaths, having some kind of panic attack. Hearing it with more clarity, the voice is Lucas. It's no doubt about it. I can't see him, and it's how much and it's higher pitched than normal, but his subdued southern accent is instantly recognizable. Lucas, where are you? I can't see you. This time he doesn't respond. The sounds of his crying and erratic breathing reverberating through the silent corridor through the silent corridor is all I can hear. It sounds like he's only a foot or two away, but there's nowhere to be for him to be. There isn't even anything big enough for him to hide behind. That's when I see it. A long crack in the wall around the fo around foot level. It's tall enough to fit someone small like Lucas and myself, and definitely wide enough. It looks long enough for someone of Lucas of Lee's of Lee's height. Rushing over, I ran into one of the benches, stabbing the arm into my gut. It's only a spike of pain. I'm more surprised than anything out. It only lasts a moment before I recover and fall all down onto my knees, pressing my face against the ground. The hole is expansive, reaching deep into the wall like some kind of hideaway spot, and inside it, looking more messed up than I've ever seen him before, is Lucas. His amber eyes are staring right into my own, but it's like he doesn't see me. His pupils are so small I can only just make them out. They're swallowed up in his hollow amber eyes. Alright guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks, and if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!